thank you for joining us in Hyphen's Haven, the space for multi-hyphenate artists working on stage and off in front of the camera and behind the scenes. We share our paths to becoming who we are. I'm excited to turn the spotlight to an artist based in Atlanta, Georgia, who has served as a set designer in the film industry for a number of years. She has worked on a wide range of projects, including Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Hillbilly Elegy, Genius, Aretha, two episodic series like CW's Dynasty, BET's Being Mary Jane, and OWN's Greenleaf. She pivoted to this industry after uh, years of being a project manager for boutique construction firms and a marketing manager. She is a double graduate from the Georgia Institute of Technology, holding degrees in industrial engineering and industrial design. So I am so happy and thrilled to introduce the multi-hyphenate artist and my former roommate from Georgia Tech, Yolande Fave. Hi. Uh, hi, Drea. Glad to be here. <laughs> Glad to be here. Yes, my favorite roommate. Uh, to all the roommates. <laughs> this is my boo, y'all. I'm just so happy. I'm so happy. So as we want the audience to get to know who you are, we mm -hmm. always invite uh, guests to begin at their genesis. So mm -hmm. tell us where you're from and tell us about your parents and those loved ones you were raised by. Okay, so I was born um, in Kingston, Jamaica, and I spent my formative years there. So, um, but my mother had wandering feet, so she eventually migrated to the States. Um, so I was moving between parents during my formative years, you know, as um, always being the new kid <laughs> in school. But, uh, you know, they're both, my mother is, let's call her banker. <laughs> she likes to deal with money. Um, an accountant for these Americans in the room. Um, and then my father was an engineer or is an engineer, um, mostly in the oil and petroleum uh, arenas. But in, in his retirement now, he's teaching. And those two combinations of kind of the studying, um, very um, process-driven personality and the gregarious, uh, you know, moneymaker a serial entrepreneur, I think that combination of those two parents um, is the basis of who I am, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. And uh, tell us about your happiest childhood memory. Did it include a holiday or just something? Um, I, it's, I don't know if it's necessarily the happiest, but the thing that sticks out in my mind is we used to live in um, a house that was basically overlooking, <laughs> excuse me, um, the city of Kingston. And so I, you could see someone coming up to the house for like half an hour before they got there. And I used to love to sit down on that balcony and kind of look out. Um, and I love that that view. Um, it it gave me um, an appreciation for being out in the open outdoors um, and, and something I carry with me all the time. So I just, I like seeing cityscapes and landscapes and environments. Um, and, and seeing how they, you know, hustle and bustle around. Cool. And were you raised with siblings or particular close relatives? Um, <clears throat> as I said, I moved around a lot as a kid. I do have siblings, but I didn't grow up with them. So um, it was mostly like, you know, cousins and little friends and then come visit and be in and out. So um, there are close relatives, but it's more that I was kind of visiting, always visiting them rather than growing up with them. Okay. And let's go back to your early learning days. What elementary school did you attend? And did you have oh, a favorite? Teacher? Lots of them. <laughs> there are lots of them. Trey. I think that was like a running joke that my, uh, my age was always uh, less than the number of schools I'd gone to. So <laughs> there's a lot of them. Probably I didn't start being stable until the last part of high school. Um, you know, and that was when, like, I had uh, two teachers that were just interested in what was going on in my head, and I'd never uh, not had that before. It wasn't that. It was more that um, in the experience of being in all these um, new schools, 
and being the new kid, the talent that I developed was mimicking. I was able to come in and be like, who are the popular girls? Who are this, these people? And just go in and navigate. And so um, I don't think that my personality came out until much later in terms of what I was interested in because I was always just trying to survive. <laughs> you know, as who's that new girl with the funny accent or whatever. <laughs> So, um, you know, but I had, you know, Mr. Uh, Townsend and Ms. Strickland who were, um, looked like me, first of all, and um, were interested in, well, like, what are you doing? What do you really want to end up doing with your life? And that attention was, was formative, I think. Was there a particular memorable experience from your younger learning days that helped lay the seeds for you to go forward through high school? Um, I think it was more that I was involved in a lot of, you know, debate club and blah, blah, blah. And those friendships in terms of just um, being able to um, form friendships quickly and have different, you know, organized, like go to this retreat and that retreat in, in order to showcase those skills from those organizations. I was, you know, I, I don't know. I think the combination of, wasn't anything uh, particular, but I think the experience, I had a good kind of education experience and I'm, you know, I wasn't traumatized by it, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> because there was no trauma living with you while at yeah. Georgia as we we're thinking about Georgia Tech, what what pulled you towards Georgia Tech? Coming from high school, what was it about tech that said, hey, let me enroll here? Um, so my, okay, so my father, as I said, is an engineer and um, I knew I wasn't going to, okay, my parents are Caribbean, right? There are only a couple of professions that they, uh, respond to or think are respectable. You know, you can be a doctor, a lawyer, a banker, because my mother's doing that, engineer, because my father was doing that. Um, and I was always like a very curious kid. Like if you left me alone for a little while, I'd be taking something apart. And so I figured, oh, okay, well maybe engineering might be the thing that will get my mother off my back. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, that's what I pursued. It was, you know, state. Um, and really it was, I went to, after high school, I went to, um, people to people program in Australia and New Zealand. And I came back and I was like, mom, I want to go to school in New Zealand. And she was like, absolutely not. <laughs> and I was like, ah, uh, I really should have, if I am thinking about it, that was the one regret from my uh, like younger years. I should have just pushed and, and made sure I, I would be different. There's another way to pursue the life that I have right now. And I think it would be interesting for me to have gone to college outside of the States. But um, I figured if I was gonna not do my, my dream of going to Australia, that I would do something that was interesting to me and engineering was it. So it was close and, and I could you know go there without causing too many problems. <laughs> So coming into Georgia Tech, um, I know that you started one major, but yeah. that is that you left with. Isn't so you, that isn't that the story though? That that's a path that you know even students who may be listening and in their collegiate careers, they're trying to decide. You know, I'm starting with this major, but I don't know if I should stay in it. So could you share your experience of just navigating? through that, All going that. through your major. I mean, you're, you're right that you, it's navigation, right? It's a winding path. I think um, I went in saying, okay, I'm gonna be a mechanical engineer like my dad. Um, and I pursued that for a long time, but I think people around me saw that I was not into it. Um, and so they suggested that I pursue industrial design. It's like I had uh, two students and a teacher say, you should look into doing this. Because I was always sort of, you know, explaining the concepts to people with drawings and rough drawings. Okay, this, I wasn't like an animation artist <laughs> in my younger years by any stretch, but the way that I understood things was visually. And so I said, oh, okay, well, let me go over here and, and, and pursue industrial design. I did them both for a long time. Um, and I hit my first internship 
um, for a mechanical engineer. And I was like looking around at my, the people who were, you know, working in the field. And I was like, um, this is not quite for me. <laughs> so I did pivot keeping industrial design, but I pivoted from mechanical engineering to industrial engineering because what was fascinating to me was actually how people move through spaces and how people interact with their environments rather than, you know, how things worked. Um, you know, I, you need that and you need to understand how things work in order to understand how it's going to affect people, but you don't necessarily need to get into the weeds of it. And so that was the degree combination that I ended up having. Um, but it took me a while to get there. And really, it's about having many jobs as Caribbean people do. <laughs> and as you, you know, go through and work and meet different people and, and um, have different experiences, you say, this is not quite right, let me pivot. And so that's the most important skill that you should have going into school is knowing when something's not feeling right for you, and being able to, to make an adjustment quickly. And I'm just going to reiterate that she entered Georgia Tech with one major, but <laughs> she went into two. She was doing as her former roommate. I remember her. She is managing two degrees at Georgia Tech, which is something that is unheard of. But <laughs> nevertheless, we're learning about an artist who was able to do that. So I'm always like, yeah, you learn. I can't do that. But like, yeah, you go for it and do it. So you have you, your own your own part pivoting that you've done. So, <laughs> and I remember that. I remember being at your graduation, and I remember like watching you. And you, you, I mean, it was just like a sight to see. Like, oh my gosh, this girl is graduating with two degrees from Georgia Tech. So now that you have graduated and you are about to transition to another world, what is pulling you forward towards where you are going? Um. So if we're talking about my first couple of jobs out of school were really like, I just need to start making money. <laughs> right. Um, and what I realized, like I had one job for um, this boutique construction firm and I, they hired me to basically do marketing, but I realized that their turnover time, this is the engineer taught in me, their turnover time between when, you know, they went out to, to talk to the client and when they gave estimates, it was like too long. And I was like, well, why is this happening? And then I realized, I started to be like, can I go out into the field with your people on the construction site to understand <laughs> what's happening? And I end up working on a construction site because of that. So I'm interested, there's, there's an engineer thing that's happening in me, but um, I was always too curious to stay in an office. <laughs> um, so things like that sort of shaped me. Um, eventually when I started working um, for Herman Miller, Geiger International, which is a furniture company, um, which they recruited me from one of those construction companies. And um, what propelled me from being in furniture to film was the mark crash. In you know, 2008, <laughs> the first thing to go was the $70,000 private office, right? So, <laughs> and my job, which was redesigning showrooms, it wasn't connected to ROI for them. So I was like, oh, they, yeah, this is going to happen. <laughs> I saw the writing on the wall. Um, and that made me stop and be like, well, do I want to be in corporate America like this? What is, what actually, what do I want to do actually? What are the things that I'm passionate about? I've always loved film. What, how do they make this? It's got to be some technical thing um, that they need help with behind the scenes. And because I didn't know anyone, I was like, oh, let me just go back to school so I can figure out, you know, how this thing is done. And so that's what I did. And you went for your master's degree uh, mm -hmm. at a particular school. Would you share your experience of being in postgraduate world? Uh, it was, you know what, that was actually a good experience for me. Although I do call it like my very expensive therapy. <laughs> so, um, but I needed the network, I think. Um, the, this program that I went to, SCAD, um, they have a very good production design program, but it's based in theater. Um, so I think I had to do a lot of maneuvering in order to get as many film 
uh, related projects out of my experience as I could. And again, you know, I'm like, what are you doing over here? Let me go take so that my my extracurricular stuff was all over the place. Cinema studies, you know, doing, you know, intro to uh, film class and cinematography classes, um, just so that I could be exposed to those people in that environment and get onto um, projects where people were, you know, doing their first short film or whatever. So it took it took a lot. <laughs> but it was it was good. I, I think it was good for me to kind of get out of Atlanta and go to Savannah and have that be my focus um, for a little while and you know figure out what the next step was. I, I needed the time. So it was a good process for me, a winding one again, but still a good process. And it was a good process for me too to go and have a place to stay in Savannah. So yeah, yeah. out for the the greatness for both of us. So I appreciate you <laughs> bringing well, You're very you. welcome. <laughs> we are transitioning out of uh, SCAD, Savannah. How did the first major work come to you? Or, or what was that first major project leaving SCAD? Um, so I had, while I was at SCAD, I actually had to take a little time off because I um, was taking care of a, a family member that passed away. So um, when I went back to finish off my master's, um, during that transition time, I, I met a few people that worked on some independent uh, projects. So I was, you know, doing set dressing and like basically being production assistant, but for low budget. So that means that you do a lot of things, <laughs> you know. Um, so I had done maybe two or three of those projects um, in my, uh, in addition to kind of doing school stuff and, and things like that. So I'd worked on a few projects to sort of build up a network. So my first job that was like a major um, film was um, Ant-Man. And I got that the day that I left, like literally the, I'm driving out of Savannah <laughs> because the person, because I was developing my own curriculum, I would jump onto um, film projects that other people were doing um, and design. And one of the projects that I was working on, we were building a ship, not to be done, <laughs> for a little short film. And um, because it was so big, the production design department were, um, fielded more students towards me to help me build this, this structure. And one of the students that helped on that project was um, was uh, art department coordinator on Ant-Man, the first one. And so he was like, someone said my name to him. He's like, wait a minute, I know you, Land. <laughs> and so he called me. So literally the day I'm moving, I'm driving away from SCAD, he's like, where are you? <laughs> he's like, uh, I'm driving. He's like, come down to the studio. And, and I interviewed for that for that job. So, you know, car packed with all kinds of stuff. I'm, you know, just freshen up the face and just walk out, walk in. <laughs> so that was my first major job, but I had done a few small independent jobs before that and, and built up my network and that kind of thing. So it's a winding process, but you, you never, this industry is large, but it's also very small. So you never know who you're, you're talking to and who, how you're gonna meet them in the future. So as you are now in uh, the Marvel universe, <laughs> uh, <Right. laughs> yeah, you're in the Marvel universe working on Ant Man. Um, how did you transition to being a lead set designer? Is that where, where you were on Ant Man, or did you? No, I was production assistant on that one in the art department. So that was my first sort of major job, and I worked as a production assistant for a number of films. Um, uh, and so I think it's all about once you figure out what your lane is in, in the industry, that you just work towards that. You get, you know, find, uh, I was in the bar department, so I knew that was where I wanted to stay in terms of the career. And so I kept on pursuing jobs that were like that, um, building up my skill set in terms of being able to produce drawings and representations of things they wanted to build. Um, and, you know, the, your reputation then precedes you as you as you start to work. So, you know, I've done a couple of Marvel films now, um, but, you know, I've done all kinds of, I've been built all kinds of strange things, Drea. <laughs> 
And so, you know, all the education and all the time I spent in school, you sort of, you think, oh, when am I ever going to use this? But, you know, you do. It, even if it just helps you think through a problem, it does help in the long run. So the transition is a gradual one, is the answer to your question. <laughs> what was the, the first project that you saw your name listed as set designer? No more. That was, um, that was the one, first one I saw or the first one I did. The first one I did was um, Alvin and the Chipmunks uh, road trip. That was my first set designer credit. And <laughs> that was really fun, honestly, because you don't think about those chipmunks. They're only so high. So they're, the focus is really on the ground and them being able to climb up on things. So you're, you know, where the camera is determines how much, where things are built. And so it was a very, and then just all the miniature furniture, it was just, it's super fun. Um, but the first time I, I really felt like, okay, I'm in this profession was on the founder, which was the story of uh, Ray Kroc, the quote unquote founder of McDonald's. <laughs> um, that story was really, I, I really loved the production designer on that film. Um, and he taught me a lot about um, the process of what I was supposed to be doing, but also it was, it was super collaborative, um, you know, asking my opinion about things and me bringing ideas. And it was, it was, it was a great process. So that was the first time I, when I saw my, my name on the credits and I was like, oh, I really did do things. <laughs> That is incredible. Um, this is my first time learning about this, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So I am all in this conversation with my mouth <laughs> open, like this is what's been happening. <laughs> I'm working, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now that you are um, set designer, you are working in it. You see, your name is credited. Uh, what dictates your uh, your your um, choice to say yes? to a project um, to you? Um, I think now it's all about, because I think when you get in this and you work in this for a little bit, you, you know, there are only so many jails you can build. <laughs> There's so many, <laughs> or, you know, office spaces. You want to try and build something uh, new and novel. And so what makes me say yes and pursue a project is really about either the team that's being built um, that I've, you know, heard a reputation about this designer or, or this um, art director, and I really like working with them. They treat their people well. <laughs> um, but also in terms of the work itself, it's about, you know, is this going to be some building something I've never built before? I mean, it's always new because every designer is different and they'll have a different take on things. But I feel like, um, you know, for instance, working on Wakanda Forever, I've never worked so much with underwater <laughs> you know everything had to be waterproof it was it was you know very intense um and their process is very, much different than working on smaller projects you know i'm i was used to getting a napkin sketch and be like okay build this do this but there you know they have so many layers of procedures you have they have a full illustration first and then you have to figure out what you're going to build of it and um you know, break that down into where we're going to build it. How's the actor going to do this uh, and do that? And you, you know, it's it's very collaborative in that way. Um, and if I get to build things that are new to me, I think because I'm always learning, right? That's the thing that drives my process anyway. Is just um, being curious about how things are done and how what will sell the story. And so if I get to do something that's novel in that direction, then I'm I'm pretty happy camper, I think. Okay. And um, she is joining us from Texas um, yeah. as we're joining, uh, talking about uh, her work process. And we're going to get into that right now. And she also has a rule that she does not discuss the work that she's doing currently. So right. we're going to talk about uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, since that has been released. So can you... Uh, uh, Describe what a general day is, or, or first of all, what has been the entire process from being hired, you say yes to a project, and then that length of time, like how long, there's so many questions I have, how long did it take for you to go from, okay, yes, 
day one till when is day 300 or what? Yeah, what is- so, yeah. so it was over a year, that project. Um, and a day in the life is, man, it really starts with your production designer, right? So um, they have a vision of what, uh, what they want the world to be like. And the, I mean, films like this is like over a hundred sets, like it's, and, and every set had many, many iterations. Um, the good thing is that normally, unless a set is really, really huge, you own a set by yourself. Um, so you're talking with the production designer and the art director, they're deciding what the scope of the thing is going to be. And you're drawing pieces of it, of it and iterating through those pieces, you know, creating 3D views of things, um, you know, sometimes taping stuff out <laughs> on the floor, um, you know, out in the parking lot someplace to see if the scale works or the, the thing works, printing things out in, in full scale to see if things will, will, will work. Um, and so it's, it, it's a, it's a constantly iterative changing process, but it's, it's fun. The hours are long, <laughs> um, but you, you're always talking about, you know, how can we get, what, what I liked about that project is you, people think, oh, it's all CG, but they built like, a lot of that was in camera. You know, if things are going to be underwater, they were underwater. <laughs> you know, um, uh, the and there are so many beautiful sets in in that in that film as well. So I let me see what did I work on on that one. So, um, like for instance, when they go into Wakanda and you see the River Tribes um, entry thing with the drum, the console, I worked on that. Riri's um, high school dorm that was supposed to be at MIT. Um, you know, I did that set, so cover sets. I did um, helipad for when they were going out to um, uh, sort of investigate where vibranium was. Sorry, spoilers for anybody who hasn't watched the film. I think everybody has kind of watched it by now. It's on Disney Plus, so I think everybody. In the second case, um, I did a lot of things in in um, telecon where Namor is. So that throne room with the big um, megalodon skull. Um, I did that interior. So there's a lot of, um, you know, you have to say, is it, is it underwater? Is a portion of it underwater? Is, um, is it day for night? You know, it's a lot of, you know, what do the colors need to be? It's a lot of discussions that happen, but it all starts with having something visually for folks to have a conversation around. And that's kind of what I do is creating those models and creating those views so people can understand what's happening. What tools do you use to create the set? Um, so my primary thing, which I'm, I think I'm an odd person out, but this is probably because I didn't start in film uh, natively. So I used um, Autodesk Revit is my primary kind of thing, uh, modeling software, but I use um, Rhino as well, 3D um, Blender sometimes. Sometimes I'm using Unreal. <laughs> um, it just depends on what's uh, required. Um, and then I get models from like mesh models that I have to then make into sense. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so the, the tools change depending on the job, but primary I'm in, in Autodesk Revit uh, most of the time making, because my, my job is really to translate the objects, modeled object into something that can be constructed. So that means dimensioning out things, slicing it up and figuring, you know, showing what all the parts are and what all the materials are. That's really the primary focus of my job. So I th- I find that uh, Revit helps me with that. Has this been <clears throat> your favorite experience thus far, Wakanda Forever, or has there been another project that has just really had an effect on your development oh man I honestly Dre you learn so much from every single one Wakanda was wonderful um but even the founder the founder I learned so much I didn't know know anything about commercial kitchens when I started that project I was like what what are we we doing (laughs) you know um I think everyone you get to build I mean I had a um like I did um well, I, I can't really talk about that because it's, it's not come out yet. But, you know, um, being Mary Jane, we built some really cool sets on there. Um, um, own a green leaf. That, those are beautiful kind of sets that we would 
because it was a small space. It was in Georgia, but filmed in Georgia, but uh, we were building so much that we had very little limited studio space. So we had to fly up a lot of things. And that was my first experience doing the wild wall that you fly. There's something they do in New York, but uh, we don't, you know, cause Georgia's big. <laughs> we don't have to, we have space. We don't need, <laughs> we don't need any of those techniques, but it's something they do in New York. And I'd never done that stuff before. So it's, um, I think every show ends up being oh, I didn't know that. Oh, this is great. You know, um, this is a new designer that I've never worked with before. Um, but I think those two, I'll just say those two are my my favorites so far is um, Wakanda Forever. But even, you know, working on Dynasty um, for so many years, um, we built a lot of cool things on that, constantly building um, for that show. So, you know, it just really depends. Okay. Has there been a... Uh, uh super challenging project that you had to get through meaning that you didn't know how you were going to get through but all of them <laughs> all of them. was there one in particular like you know oh my god like this this is a I, lot but okay, I tell, well okay okay i tell you one story so um this was on uh guardians of the galaxy too so i i was um going to interview for that job and i um i hadn't seen the first one right so i sat down and I was watching it with my partner. Um, and after the film credits started rolling, I turned to him and I was like, there are no walls. It's all, it's all like caves and ships. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> there are no, I mean, it's just, I was like, what, what am I gonna do? <laughs> So, and it, that was a struggle, I think, just all those organic environments, trying to wrap my head around doing those was, uh, was intense. So I went in being like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And it was, it was intense. <laughs> you worked your way through Guardians of the Galaxy having no walls, which is now like, I'm thinking like, hey, there are no walls. <laughs> so as a set designer who is accustomed to having walls, and now you're on a project with none. Oh, that is something to get through. But you did get through because it's an amazing project. Yeah. And uh, shout out to the, the ride. I have to, this is on a, a side, but I went to Epcot and to the Guardians of the Galaxy ride that just opened at Epcot. It is amazing. So ah, I'll have to check that one out. Yeah. <laughs> Got to. We, we, let's make it a trip. I'm trying to get at the Epcot. Epcot. And that's a completely aside, but Guardians of the Galaxy, I loved it. So, um, <laughs> so uh, um, professionally, what is your land's goal? Um, I think now to take on projects that um, have a, a story with heart, you know? So I, I have some favorite uh, directors that I'd love to work on a project with. Like oh. uh, Guillermo del Toro is probably one of my favorites. So, you know, Crimson Peak and Pan's Labyrinth and, you know, um, it, and he just, he has a very good um, sensibility. I mean, he just did Pinocchio, which ended up beautiful. And I haven't worked on a stop um, animation. So that would be another kind of goal. But it's, it's um, I just think that these things, kind of follow you as you try and do good work you know um like I'd want to design a Cirque du Soleil show I don't know what's involved in that but let me get on it <laughs> I'll put it out in order <laughs> come on get speaking now These yeah, are go ahead and, come on let's let's do it because I you know I've seen a number of them now and I'm like oh beautiful I mean it's all about the acrobats but the technical aspects of how they put those sets together I was like oh yeah let's do that let's figure that that thing out <laughs> so um I I I just say yes to people and stories that are um have a little bit of heart to them and hopefully show more diversity <laughs> In their storylines <laughs> we try it's hard sometimes <laughs> yeah well i'm working to try to put forth some projects so mm -hmm. that i can formally work with my roommate from georgia <laughs> my goal to create a project that i can afford to pay her 
So <laughs> put that out there, universe. Let me pay. My well, own. yeah, you need to pay yourself too. So <laughs> oh, yeah. I need to eat. I need to support my baby. Exactly. My daughter. Yeah. So so normally I ask uh, artists, uh, three artists you'd like to work with, and you gave one. Are there two more artists? Uh, let's see. And now you're putting me on the spot because now I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but the, um, I have IMDb standby. Yeah, I know. Right. IMDb, um, Parasite, the director did Parasite. Now I'm, I'm, I'm spacing on his name. Please apologize. Um, but I do, I do love his, like, he's done Ocha. He's done a couple of films and I'm like, oh, I really like your aesthetic. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Which we can uh, work with that. That is the voice of my little Munchkin who is coming forward. And uh, we're going to keep going. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is there a piece of advice that you have received that you would like to share with those who are listening to encourage? Um, piece of advice. I think. Um, the main one that someone said to me is don't look for external validation, especially um, in this industry, you're not gonna get it in the way that you want <laughs> or the way that's helpful. Um, you really have to determine what makes you work um, and what propels you forward internally um, because it's rough out here. <laughs> so that would be my advice is that find out um, find out what motivates you um, and don't look for an external person to validate that thing. If you're pursuing it with all your gusto, um, the accolades will come when they ha don't have a choice. The accolades will come when they don't have a choice because you are putting in the work and you're going after what gets you moving. I love that. I received that too. So we're going to move to the round. This segment is all about just getting to know you as an individual a little bit better. Some okay. of the questions are rapid response and some may take a little thought to answer, but we just want to get to know you as a person. So are you ready? Okay. All right. <laughs> Dogs or cats? Dogs, but I have a healthy respect, distant healthy respect for cats. <laughs> <laughs> Window or aisle seat? Uh, I'll take a window. Okay. What book would you give as a gift? It depends on my intent, but I have given um, Yuval Harari's Sapien and Homodius as gifts. Um, I, I, I like how he sort of breaks down, gives like that 30,000 foot view of humanity and makes you, gives you perspective especially since we get so bogged down in the day-to-day -day function of our lives and how we think we're right about everything. <laughs> it was nice to kind of step back and, and get perspective. So I have given that, those books of his as gifts. Wonderful. What movie can you not resist watching if it came on right now? All of the things. Um, probably Fifth Element is the thing that I always sit down and watch, even if I because I've seen it so many times. Um, Hans Labyrinth is another one I've seen a million times that so I'll sit down and watch. Um, so probably those two. Dune, maybe. I don't know. I'm definitely, I'm not uh, sci-fi. I'm more fantasy. So the things that are fantasy, I'll, I'll sit down and watch and that are funny and lot, lots of lively cultures. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite recipe to cook or awesome. eat? I okay eats because Yolan doesn't. This is I functions so that food comes to me, <laughs> right? Not, food, yeah, me. it just comes to me. Like these are the systems I've set up in my life. Just, anyway, but my favorite type of food probably is Indian, um, just because they do. You know, you try to be vegetarian sometimes, and um, the way they season their food it reminds me of home, but still gives me a little bit of. Uh, additional culture so okay what is your favorite word uh no <laughs> no complete sentence yes no is a complete sentence <laughs> what makes your land laugh the most 
Um, I think things that are, well, I like when people are stepping into their, uh, their power, but uh, without knowing how to wield it. So <laughs> Miss, Miss McGotten power. <laughs> so I'll, I'll laugh at those situations. You know, they're, they're doing a thing, but misaligned in some ways. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, what would be your theme song or entrance music if you're walking into a room? Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, I should pick something by Bob Marley, right? Like three little birds or something. And that has saved me once. Like I, I remember I went to the Olympics um, uh, in Brazil and it was a game between Argentina and Brazil soccer game or for Americans. And, and the, so we got onto the train and it was like a bunch of people um, from both teams uh, on the train and they were about to you know, get into arguments and the people in my crew started singing you know, the, that song, don't worry about a thing. And, and everyone started to sing together. So <laughs> I'll take that as being a, a theme song, I think. <laughs> And let's say that this theme song is playing when you are walking into a social gathering or an event. What does your land order to drink? Oh, okay. So in that social environment, I I will go with anything that has ginger in it. So I'll do the mules, Moscow mules or something like that. But if I'm by myself, I usually order something with bourbon, like an old fashioned or something like that. So <laughs> something sweet and fruity if I'm with people. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, if you had to choose one superpower, what would it be? Um, I mean, I think I'd like to, I like that electricity through the hands. Yeah, I, I don't know, something about that, you know, like Power is that new series that's coming out. I love the book so much. <laughs> um, and And this idea that, you know, people who are, uh, didn't have power before have a superpower is appealing to me. So I would, I, I like that. Okay. And if you are a superhero, who would be your arch nemesis? Who is against what you stand for? Well, you know, the thing about it is, I think having a superpower is not effective if people know that you have a superpower. So the arch nemesis really that people know you have it. <laughs> I think I'd much rather uh, wield my power behind uh, behind a curtain. <laughs> okay, I like that answer. Mm -hmm. I dig that a lot. Um, so, Yelaine, who is your favorite person to follow on social media? Ooh, um, I probably follow um, Michaela Cole or Issa Rae just to see what they're doing. I think the way that they're carving out their craft and their art and their voice is very interesting to me. If you could change one thing about yourself, would it would it be? I think the speed at which I learn things. I would love to be able to take on new skill sets faster. Okay. And what profession other than your own would you say that you'd like to do? I know you've been through a couple of them. I know, um, right? Um, I think I would want to do something like social anthropology. Um, I would have said um, archaeology, but I have some issues with the way in which um, archaeologists remove things from local cultures and don't return them. <laughs> so, um, I, I, but I am interested in in how people live in different cultures and the things that they do to function and on how that process works um, for someone else outside of myself. So, I think I'd be interested in that as a profession. Awesome. Another, another life. Um, and I can have that happening, knowing who you are, your, your attention to detail is unmatched. So I can, I can see that happening for you. And that's awesome that you shared that with us. So we're approaching the, the final segment and we want to, uh, share with us, um, if you would, uh, future projects that you're looking forward to. I know you can't talk about the one that you're on right now, but is there one that has been completed that is coming that you can share? Let's um, I did, let's see. So I did this um, Latin American superhero uh, movie called Blue Beetle. Should be fun. 
Um, and uh, there's another kind of bromance, please don't destroy, but it's, it's, uh, it's in transition right now. So we'll see what happens with that. But I think the future really holds, I, I like working outside of Atlanta. <laughs> so I think I'll pursue projects that are like around the country for a little bit, and then I'll, I'll come back. But for now, I, I like, you know, kind of seeing other places um, in the country and, and seeing and hopefully I'm I'm determined to get back to New Zealand. That's my, <laughs> that's always my goal. <laughs> that one regret. That oh, one yeah. regret. <laughs> let's go. Let's, so if someone wants, you know, the next Lord of the Rings, I know they just finished the, the Hobbit series or whatever over there. I'll come. Don't worry. <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> my friend is ready, ladies and gentlemen. She's ready yeah. to go work New Zealand. We're going to reiterate that. New Zealand. <laughs> New Zealand. Come on. Oh, uh, so yeah. Are there um, some shout outs or some love outs you want to give to people who have been supportive of you on your journey? Um, I think I'll just thank my parents. Um, they've been really, they just let me go and do my thing, even though they don't understand what I'm doing sometimes. Um, and I, you can't, I can't tell you the number of people I've encountered where uh, had family structures that, um, weren't supportive in that way. And with them, you know, kind of behind me and encouraging me, I kind of done, I've, I've done pretty well for myself. And so I, I have to lay the thanks and the gratitude towards them. Um, there've been a ton of artists along the way that I've learned from, but I have to start with my parents because, you know, yeah. they made this happen. <laughs> of everything and how can people uh, learn more about you or follow you on social media uh, you can reach out to me on linkedin um or uh, just my website just giving me a message i'll normally respond to those types of things so info uh, um whyfame.com essentially okay and the links uh, are posted in the description box so uh, we'll provide a way for you to follow her on social media and to reach out to her if you have some questions. Mm -hmm. Well, we have come to the end of today's spotlight. Uh, if this podcast has helped you, please share and be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to Dream Adrea and Hyphens Haven across all social media platforms. My name is Drea of Dream of Drea, a production company specializing in driving your dreams to screens. Remember, wherever you are right now is the perfect time to act on your dreams. Thanks again to your land fame, a noted set designer, and we will catch up with you all next time. Yeah, it's been fun. All right, I'll take care.